Welcome to the introductory series of training videos for SOLIDCAM. This video's topic is the threading operation. So threading, as the name implies, will add a thread to your turned part on your lathe or your mill turn. And the operations as such are pretty much similar to the turning operation we covered in the turning operation video in this series. So some of the basics might be covered here, might be repeated here, but um, I would refer you to the turning operation for details on things like chain selection and, and, uh, and that sort of thing, geometry selection. But let's take a look at the threading operation specifically. So to get to the threading operation, you can go up to your SolidCam turning tab, click on threading, or you can right click on your last toolpath, add turning operation, and threading. So like I mentioned, this operation is very similar to other turning toolpaths inside the turning and mill turn module. Uh, we're gonna do things like geometry, tool, levels, technology, and link. The workflow is always the same through all our toolpaths. In terms of geometry selection, it's very similar to uh, what you would see in the turning operation, so I'll refer you to that for details on geometry selection. But here what we're gonna do is we're gonna do something similar to the turning, but with a little bit of detail more specific for threading. In this case, I'm looking at my part. The green profile shows the turned and finished part. I'm only looking to thread this area right here. So that means from my target profile, I need to choose just this chain right here and only that chain. But one thing to note is that if I go to modify the geometry for auto extend to the start and the end of the stock, these chamfers are already here. So the auto extension just ends right at the beginning of that line anyway. And that's probably not where I want to start and end my, my threading toolpath. So to add a little bit of what could be considered a lead in lead out, but more so it's probably just the beginning and end of the toolpath with the threading, is I'm going to go to the modify geometry, turn off the auto extend, and then just extend it manually. I'm gonna put in 50 thou at the front and 50 thou at the end. Basically that starts the thread a little bit before and a little bit after. So that gives me kind of a threading in uh, lead in and lead out. In terms of the tool, creating turning tools is, uh, is covered in the creating turning tools video in this introductory series. So I'll refer you to that for the details of how to set up the tool. But specifically for a threading tool, You'll grab either your external threading or internal threading, drag it to this window here, and then you'll see that you have shank definition and thread definition. The shank definition is very simple. It's really just what shank type, the insert that you're holding onto, and the left hand or right hand cut. The thread insert allows you to choose these dimensions here to further define your insert, or you can get it to auto populate from the thread type. And the thread type is just going to look at these different thread tables. In this case, I'm just going to use the UN. And from here, I'll grab whatever type I'm looking for. In this case, I originally chose a, a 2 by 4.5. And that auto-populates this section here and gives me the insert that looks like that. And you can always check to see if your tool is mounted correctly by checking this icon here. You can see that the tool is mounted correctly. Under levels, that's just your safety distance away from the updated stock or the target profile. So this will make sure that in repositions or throughout the toolpath, it doesn't actually uh, uh, gouge the part. It has its own internal gouge checking. Under technologies, where you're gonna see the main parameters of this toolpath, and very similar to what we saw in the turning operation, you have things like outside, inside, front, and back. Now, this being threading, the outside and the inside basically is male or female, but the front and back is referring to creating a spiral on the front face of your part. So with the same insert, if it's mounted uh, in the positive Z or negative Z in the case of the sub spindle, um, then you can actually generate a spiraling toolpath on the front face of your part. Under work type, we have the option of doing either a multiple step down here, step down, minimum step, finish allowance, or if the insert just needs to do a single pass, for your threading, you just set it to single pass. Multiple start, as the name implies, you can just tell it how many starts you want for your threading operation. You just put the number in there and you can see that it projects it around the, uh, the circumference of the part. It's on the right side that you'll see, again, parameters related to the actual threading. So again, we have the ability to call the, the thread by going to table and then choose from our table. So I'm just gonna grab from this table here and I'm gonna grab that two by four and a half once again. And what you'll see is it auto populates these areas here. So that's why they're grayed out because they're tied into that threading table and you can see the call out there as well. So we're looking at our 4.5 TPI and then a minimum diameter called out by 
the thread type that I've chosen. In this case, that's just going to be from the threading table as well. But if I have a finer thread or a custom thread that I'd like to control here, I can change this to user defined, and then it opens those up for definition. Uh, so a, a trick you can uh, you can do here is if you have a thread that is close enough to one of these, for instance here, two and a half, two by four and a half. But this uh, this face right here is actually two and an eight. Uh, I'm just going to choose that, switch to user defined. I'll still use the same CPI, but maybe I can't use that same liner diameter. I might actually crash into my part. So what I can do is change this to depth. And then actually now that is just a thread depth. So from the diameter that I've chosen here, it'll go a little further down by that much to create that thread or vice versa. Maybe this is still a two inch diameter, but I'm looking for a finer thread. In this case, I can change the TPI or change the pitch to millimeters, whatever I'm looking for in this window. If the insert can do finishing, we have the thread finish. So we can actually finish the thread with the same insert. Or if the insert can do external finishing, we just click on yes and it'll do the external finishing. Under link, it's really just the approach point and the retraction point to the right safety corner. Right safety corner is going to be that safety distance, both in X and Z, away from the part. But of course, again, you have a pull down menu here where you can control the actual approach point. So if you'd rather it approach from Z only or X only or from a previous one in the case of trying to trim your toolpath, you have the ability here to, to modify that. I'm just going to do a saving calculate on this. I'm just doing my single threading. What we could do is we could take a look at that in our turning simulation, which is unique to the turning and mill turn module. It really just gives me this profile view of my part, and I can just generate my turning toolpath like that, and I can see if everything looks good. I can also do threading in the solid verify simulation to confirm certain items. For instance, here, my insert probably doesn't have the proper depth to do this exact thread. So I might want to pull this up, maybe reduce my thread depth, uh, or maybe my insert is wrong. For now, I'm just going to click stop and then just get it to complete the thread for me just to see what that thread looks like on this part. And, that's th and the solid verify shows us the proper look of that thread. So we can actually confirm that everything on there looks like it has been properly threaded. So any questions of this or anything else from Solacam, just give us a call at 1-866-975-1115, extension 2, and stay tuned for the rest of the videos on this introductory series. Thanks for watching.